Alex Chud, and this is my 2019 F-150. So this was originally a factory Roush Nightmare truck that was two-wheel drive. Uh, it had the Roush supercharger on it uh, and was supposed to be a daily driver. Uh, it was not supposed to turn into uh, to this. So shortly after getting it, uh, took the supercharger off, threw that thing away, uh, put a twin turbo kit on it. Um, so basically right now, it has custom fabricated forward facing headers. They are twin 78, 75 uh, VS Racing mirror image turbos, but it's got a fully forged uh, RPG level three built motor, uh, Darton sleeved, 300 M rods. Uh, last winter, I switched it over to four wheel drive, pulled the cab, uh, had to make a bunch of custom mounts for the front dip and throw a bunch of junkyard four-wheel drive parts at it. So the front diff and CV axles are all factory F-150 stuff. Uh, the transmission is a turbo 400 and then it has a NP261, which is a 2001 to 2006 Silverado transfer case. So it's got a little bit of Chevy uh, and a little bit of Ford mixed in there to get the four-wheel drive work out. It's been two years uh, and maybe 400 leaves off the trans brake and haven't broken any driveline stuff yet. So going on here, we have an 8.5 uh, cert cage done by EC1 race cars in Davison. Um, we got obviously the M&M uh, turbo 400 shifter. It's hard to tell uh, with everything being dark in here, uh, but down in the center console uh, is the floor shift which allows me to do a burnout and two-wheel drive and then click it into four. Or if I'm cruising around town and want to have a little fun in two-wheel drive or get on it, I can just quickly shift it down. Um, it's got the link aim dash in there. There's a lot with the single cab trucks, uh, you can't get a center console or black interior. So a lot of this stuff was swapped out, but uh, as weird as it may sound is I drive this thing all the time. So has electric AC, it still has heat, radio, all functions. Uh, the whole plan of this was to have a, a real fun street car. So I still wanted full interior, but I also wanted to be safe. So there's quite a bit going on back here. Uh, it has a full back half or four link rear suspension. Um, when all the cage work was being done, uh, basically we cut the truck right here uh, and rebuilt everything from the back uh, out of tube chassis. This also was done by EC1 race cars in Davison. So everything, we moved radiator, fuel cell, battery, all to the back with the trucks. Uh, the weight bias is really bad for drag racing. So trying to take some of the weight from the front and move it where we, where we need it. A lot of the reasoning behind doing basically this four link setup is we do a lot of no prep events and all the tracks have different surfaces. So with the with the four link setup, if you look down at the bars, uh, the four link bars, there's a bunch of holes basically everywhere in the front and the back. And it allows you to adjust the suspension on how the vehicle reacts and how the tire hits the surface. So if we go to one track, say we go to Milan and we run back of the track at Milan, the surface is gonna be different than what it is gonna be, say at the track up in Lapeer. So we'll have our data and we can move the bars around and adjust how the rear tire hits the ground. Hey, what's up? I'm Andy. I'm here with Alex's truck at PRI in the Link booth. Uh, we got an all-wheel drive F-150 uh, tuned on a Link Extreme ECU. It's a G4X. Uh, the truck is all-wheel drive, which does end up a little bit challenging for us. We like to no prep race this thing and we don't really have any ground speed on it. So uh, we use something called rate of change in the ECU along with a race timer uh, to ramp in boost. Uh, we use the rate of change to act as an active traction control to pull ignition timing and to do an ignition cut on it to help us get down on any surface with it. You know, we can play some games with it based on the timer and then, you know, obviously we've got a scramble button. So if we're partway down the track and we're not quite in front, you know, we'll stab another five or 10 pounds of boost at it. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, just over time, you'll compile some data and, you know, we've got something that we label as the gravel road tune-up that we might use in first round at a no prep or something like that. Or, you know, once we've walked the track, we'll, you know, me and Alex to kind of make a decision on what's going to go in it for first round. And then you just got to kind of pay attention to track conditions and then 
you know, with the, you know, with how powerful the link is, we're able to jump in, make some quick changes, even if we're, you know, already stay in the staging lanes and we're only two, three cars back and we see somebody spill some water in our lane or, you know, it looks like our lane's getting stickier, you know, we'll be right there trying to make a quick change before we send them down the track.